Okay, folks, this is Vern Hall coming to you from my home in Johnson City, Tennessee, and there is a major, major problem that we want to address in our society today, and it is a problem that has persisted for many, many years, and it's a problem that has corrupted hearts, it has destroyed families, it has destroyed churches, it has destroyed ministries, and it's not a problem that exists among a particular age group because young and old people alike have been gripped by it. And I'm talking about pornography. Pornography. Pornography is a problem today because it comes from the hearts and the minds of depraved people who not only do those things which honor God, but they take pleasure in others who do the same. So I've done some research. And we're going to define pornography, first of all. So what is pornography? Well, pornography is defined as obscene literature, art, or photographs, especially that having little or no artistic merit. And then another source defines pornography as printed or visual material con containing the explicit description or display of sexual organs or activity intended to stimulate erotic rather than aesthetic or emotional feelings. So that's a brief nutshell of what pornography is. The word pornography is an interesting word because it, it comes from two Greek words, porne, which means a harlot, and graphian, which means to write. So the word pornography literally means the writing of, an, of a harlot. And it exists in anywhere and everywhere. It's not hard to find it in this world. Pictures, magazines, television shows, movies, websites, advertisements. Just anywhere the vileness of pornography can flow in our day and time, it will flow there. And it's nothing new. It's been around for a very long time. In fact, we don't often consider this, but pornography was around in the time of Christ. There might not have been movies and magazines and internet sites and and uh, and uh, uh, TV programs, but there were writers who wrote a lot of things that were very pornographic in nature. So when we read the New Testament, I've got my Bible right here. We're going to read some here in just a moment. When we read the New Testament, it speaks very clearly of the impurity and immorality of the world in which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was born. And all we need to do is read Romans chapter 1, and we'll see several references to sexual sin. So I've got my Bible open to Romans chapter 1. If you'd like to follow along, I'm going to begin reading in verse number 20. And um, as we read this, just pay attention to the references of sexual sin. Romans chapter 1, verse number 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, 
uh, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implicable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So those verses there in Romans chapter 1 apply to the very world that our Lord and Savior was born into. It was the, the same world that the apostles were sent forth and commissioned to carry the gospel message uh, and to declare the holiness of God as opposed to the unholiness of the heathen false gods. And the false gods of the heathen, they actually encouraged sexual sin. But God, the God of the Bible, calls us to be holy as he is holy. So since those days, the vileness of pornography has continued to flow into every crevice of society and into every crevice of any heart that it can possibly flow into. And now we have a society that actually frowns upon those who will speak against pornography. If you try to stand against pornography in this day and time, uh, you're labeled as someone who's closed-minded, uh, someone who's, uh, uh, who's not up for an open discussion in all the wild books and magazines and TV shows and movies and, and websites and advertisements. They just continue to push the envelope and they just increase in vileness year after year uh, after year. But God has not been silent on the matter of sex and sexuality. In fact, he has spoken very clearly on these things. He's the one who created sex. And he created sexuality, so why would he be ashamed uh, to talk about it? Well, he's not. The problem is that we have failed today. We have failed in many homes and families, and we have failed to teach our children about sex within a biblical framework and within the context of faith, within the context of holiness, within the context of truth, and therefore the view that many people now have of sex is ridden with guilt and it's ridden with shame and the reason for this is because our children for so many years now they've had to learn about sex from godless sources we've abdicated our responsibilities plain and simple we have abdicated our responsibilities and we have failed in this area so now in come the pornographers and they're all too willing to pick up where we left off and instead of families and churches addressing sexual matters in the light of truth, the pornographers come in and they come at the subject not from truth, not from the perspective of faith and light, but they come at it from the perspectiveness, uh, the perspective of the vileness of their own hearts, their perverted hearts. And as our children grow older, when they need to know something about sex, instead of going to the source of truth, they go back to all that they've ever been taught which is the sleazy publications, the sleazy movies, the sleazy websites. And now we have people who are so tainted in this world by this godless perception of sex that when they finally do begin to read the word of God on the matter, then they filter God's word about sex through the funnel of everything that they've learned from the pornographers. And that's why so many people end up living in guilt and shame where sex is concerned today because they're reading the word of God in light of what pornography has taught them instead of reading, uh, 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 instead of seeing the truth of the matter in light of what God has said on the subject. So they've got it all backwards. They've got that twisted around and there is a vacuum of ignorance now that has been left as a result of this abdication in this area and now we've got a lot of young folks who are aware of the fact that the Bible speaks against adultery, sexual uh, uh, impurity within the marriage context. They'll, they'll grant that, and they seem to understand that, but they don't realize that fornication, sexual acts between people who are not married, that that's also sinful, that God also speaks against that. Somehow we've gotten to a place where a lot of people think it's perfectly fine as long as you're not married and cheating on your spouse. You see, they've heard just enough Bible uh, to lead to abuses to what the Bible actually says because they've never been exposed to sound, consistent, faithful preaching and teaching of God's Word. So this is why society becomes more and more accepting of pornography as time goes on. But it's, a, it's, it's just total bondage, friends. 
it's complete bondage. And all across the world, there are pastors who are trying to work with people and, and to counsel people who have destroyed their lives due to sexual indulgences that were founded outside of God's plan. And there are millions and millions of people today who are so twisted by what the, the porn industry has taught them that they have this entire large area of their lives that they just try to hide. They try to keep that in the dark. They try to keep that hidden. And it becomes such a struggle for them to keep that hidden that they just can't ever seem to escape the clutches of this bondage, the bondage of pornography. And, and many other people are living in a constant denial that pornography has any negative effect at all. But the effects of it are present not only at the very moment the person indulges in it, but it reaches far into the future to the point where even professing Christians are now living marginalized and defeated lives because of sexual sin. So what do we do? What do we do? Well, the problem is raging today to the point uh, that men and women not only battle these constant urges that come from all types of media sources uh, and advertising and on and on, but uh, James Kennedy said this decades ago, and it rings true today more than it ever has. He said it's bad enough to have a broken sewer in the community, but it's even worse to hook up a private line from that sewer and run it right straight into your living room. But that's what many people are still doing today. I mean, I think it was Doug Wilson who gave the illustration that there are a lot of professing Christians today who would never think for a moment about entertaining an invitation from a neighbor to come over and, and uh, watch what the neighbors are doing in their bedroom. They would think that those people were crazy for even, for even offering such an invitation, but yet we'll sit right in our living rooms and watch the exact same thing on the television screen and not think twice about it. So this is a problem today. And perverted internet sites and dating apps and much more are out there and they're shoveling this content at people just as quick as they can and people are, are taking it in just as quick as they can, young and old alike. So it's not just a particular age group. All age groups are battling with this. So what are we supposed to do? Well, God has given us some truths in his word that we need to consider. Paul told the Corinthian church, and just go ahead and give you a warning. This is not popular. I mean, I mean, it's been well demonstrated in our church that this is not popular, but it's still true nonetheless. Paul told the Corinthian church that they needed to deal firmly with people who were involved in sexual sin, lest the whole church become corrupted. So we have 1 Corinthians chapter 5 in the Bible. I'm going to go there. It's only 13 verses. Let's read the whole chapter. This is very important. 13 verses. Uh, well, yeah, verses 1 through 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Listen to this, friends. This is the word of God and not the word of man. This is God's words. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Here we go. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication is as not so much as named among the Gentiles that one, that one should have his father's wife, and ye are puffed up. And have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present concerning him that hath so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together, and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the Spirit may be saved in the day of our Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then, 
for then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such an one know not to eat. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within, but them that are without God judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. So, well, you may say, Brother Vern, that's in the church, but what about out there in the society? Society seems like it's just too far gone. There are some practical things that we can do to combat this pornography surge in society. There are some things we can do. First of all, don't promote uh, or watch TV programs that are pornographic in nature. Don't, don't go out and pay money for a particular movie ticket when you already know that that movie has scenes that are going to display pornographic images. Let's say for an example that you su subscribe to a magazine publication and it's okay at first but then they begin to just push the envelope and and they cross the line. You can discontinue that subscription. I mean there's all kinds of practical things that we can do in society and if enough people would do them then it would actually make an impact and it would actually send a message. But the deeper issue is the fact that God has commanded that we live lives that are holy, pure, and clean before him. If you're harboring unrepentant sin in your life, such as illicit sex, ungodly indulgences, fornication, adulterous thoughts, friend, you need to know there's bondage in all of that. There's bondage in that, pure bondage. Pure bondage. And the Bible commands us to flee immorality. As a matter of fact, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 18 says to flee fornication. Flee fornication. Flee means to run away rapidly as from danger. It means to try to escape. That's what we are to do. We are to flee. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 22 says, abstain from all appearance of evil. That would not only include doctrinal evil, which was in view there, and evil of, uh, of things that God has clearly spoken against, such as sexual impurity, but also anything that might even seem to be evil, such as shacking up and living with someone in a relationship where you're not married, but you're constantly exposing yourself to that temptation. We are to abstain from that. God has clearly spoken here. And then we have 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. Learn these verses, friends. This will help you. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So if you find yourself tempted with pornography, that very moment is the time to deal with it. When that temptation first comes on the scene, that's when you deal with that. You bring that thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Don't let it grow. Don't let it fester. Deal with that immediately. At the very first glance, flee. Remove yourself from the source of temptation. I'm going to say that again because a lot of people need to learn this today. A lot of people need to hear this. Remove yourself from the source of temptation. Get it away from you. Get it out of your life for the love and the glory of God. Remove yourself from that. Jesus said to even look on another person with lust is to commit adultery in your heart. That's what Jesus said. So if we're going to follow Christ, then we've got to be on guard because we've got an enemy out there. We've got an adversary called the devil who has a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour and he'll try to get in through your eyes. He'll try to get in through your ears. He'll try to come into your mind. However, he can come in and gain a foothold. He will do it. So you've got to watch. You've got to be on guard. You've got to be ready. And when there's any sign of danger, you've got to run to Jesus. So friend, if you're listening to me today, and I'm going to say this and then we're going to 
in this video for now. But if you're listening to me today and you've fallen into some sort of pornographic sin or some sort of sexual sin, you've got to look to Christ. You've got to turn to Jesus. You've got to turn to the one who died on the cross for you and rose again. You've got to turn to the one who, paint, uh, who paid the atoning price for all of our sin. You've got to repent. Come to Christ by faith. You see, because Christ is the only one who can cleanse you. Christ is the only one who can wash you. He's the only one who can make you new. He, he's the only one who can make you clean. He's the only one who can give you a new heart and make you a new creature. He's the only one who can cause you to be born again. He's the one who shows us grace and mercy and forgiveness. He can give you a new heart. He can give you strength. So that's what we've got to do. We've got to look to Christ. For Christ is our only hope. I hope this has been helpful to someone today. Maybe you've been struggling with this. I hope this has uh, been a blessing to you. I'll be praying for you. If you know anybody out there who, uh, you know, maybe has conf confided in you that they, they struggle with pornography, I'm not asking you to break their confidence or anything like that, but it, maybe you might want to share this video with them. Maybe it'll be a help to them. Just know that we're praying for you. If you're out there, you're struggling with this. And if there's anything that I can do for anybody out there, uh, reach out to me, uh, you know, send me a message. And I, I'm certainly more than willing to sit down with you, talk to you, show you what the word of God says, pray for you. And, uh, you know, just whatever I can do to be a blessing and a help to you, I'm more than willing to do that. So that's all I've got to say for now. We hope this has been helpful. We love you and everyone have a good evening.